Welcome back to Tonight Live. It's 10 o'clock, the time when those other channels tend to tell you what you should be thinking. But this is where you get to have your chance to speak to the rest of the United Kingdom through GB Views. And tonight, the big question is this. Has woke culture gone too far? I'm joined by actor turned political activist Lawrence Fox. He was one of the country's most popular lovies, watched by millions in hit drama series Lewis and Victoria. But then he surprised many by becoming a political activist, having been, in his words, totally radicalised by consumption of YouTube videos about woke culture and political correctness. The outspoken actor has since come under fire for his comments on taking the knee and for joining anti-lockdown protests. And this year, he even stood against Sadiq Khan in the London mayoral elections with the Reclaim Party. He joins us tonight to take on your questions. Lawrence Fox, it's great to have you here. So many people wonder, right, why you did this. Because whatever your political views were, you had the life that most British men want. You know, you were married to one of the sexiest actresses in Britain. Uh, you then, after you broke up, you had a whole host of leading ladies on your arm. I used to see you at event after an event. You know, you, you were loved. You, you were the man that everyone wanted at their party. As soon as you got political, that all changed. So, so, so what drove you? Uh, it's a good question. I, I, I think I stayed the same. I think a lot of people say this, um, that they stayed the same and the, the culture changed and moved away from them. So I would sit on set with Kevin Waitley for 10 years and he's a lefty and I'm possibly a righty if you would divide society that way. But um, it just became more and more and more intolerant. You know, the, the sort of socially conservative way of looking at life became evil. And um, so, you know, showbiz kind of left me rather than the other way around. But yeah, you're right, I really miss the good times. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, you have faced what we now define as cancel culture. You know, you were dropped by your agent following that appearance on, on Question Time. You had a role in a Netflix TV series, which you now fear what could be your last major acting role? Just been offered a film. Have you? <laughs> yeah. Great news. <laughs> Worryingly, it's a career-ending film, though. <laughs> so, um, what do you mean? Well, it's just a career-ending film. I can't announce it because they want to announce it, but it's one of those parts It's like, don't play that part, Loz. Don't do that. But I'm like... Mm. OK, but, but, so, but so you've been to name my segment, uncancelled. Well, no, you're not, um, you're not uncancelled. I've been totally cancelled by um, the whole of showbiz, haven't I? But showbiz is cancelling itself. Um, mm. The audiences of the Oscars and Golden Globes, they're, they're just feeding themselves their own sort of pathetic narrative. And um, audiences don't care, as you can see in the viewing figures of, of these ceremonies and stuff. They're just applauding each other, and it's boring. But how was it when people who had previously been close friends I mean, there was obviously the example of, of Rebecca Front, the, the actress. Yeah. I mean, how was it, and I'm sure there's many others that, that you haven't gone public with, how was it when they ended their friendships with you? Well, weirdly, they haven't ended their friendships with me. They just will not speak publicly in support of me, which I totally understand, because, you know, actors go from job to job to job and they need their money. But, yeah, Rebecca was really hurtful because she was the person that said... Join Twitter, Loz. They'll love what you've got to say yeah. on Twitter. So I was very hurt. But also, I'm very emotional. So, uh, you know, I didn't handle the Rebecca Front situation so well. But, you know, I don't like... Um, I don't like disliking people or changing your view of someone based on their political views. I think we should have personal relationships and then respect... Not respect, tolerate each other's political views. You know, I think that's kind of important, but we seem to have entered a world where that's not cool nowadays, and it just feels sad to me. You're going to hate this question. All right, but, good. But any time I speak to anyone about you, including when they knew you were coming on tonight, they all want to know, what does Billy think about this, and why does she never get asked about you now in interviews? I think she's probably got a better PR team than I do in terms of the fact that she says, oh, I'm not going to answer that. Um, I don't know what she thinks about it. I don't um, have sort of those sorts of conversations with her. We're divorced and we raise our kids together. So you'd have to ask her, I think, on that one. Do you regret anything you've done over the past two years? 
millions of things on a daily basis I regret, but that's the most important thing in life, is the right to regret and the right to go, you know what, I was wrong there. But we're, we're living in a, a social media age where every single mistake, you've got Ollie Robinson, who's tweeting something 10 years ago as a baby, you know. Neurologists are saying that men's brains are not growing and fully developed until they're in their late 20s. So you've got a guy who's made a mistake and he's being pilloried and vilified by the very establishment that should be there to support him, the UCB. And, you know, it's absolutely... A, it's, just, it's, it's, it's shameful. And, and the problem when these organisations do this, Lawrence, they open the floodgates. Because, of course, the moment that poor Ollie Robinson was cancelled, and I've spoken out against this, I thought it was a revolting act, and I think the ECB didn't show him any level of duty of care either, given this was a man who'd spoken about his, his troubles in the past and was made to publicly apologise on what was meant to be the greatest day of his life. Of course, as soon as they open the floodgates up, You've got all of these other cricket stars being investigated for sending old tweets. And where does it end? Well, well obviously with Michael Vaughan with his friends, mm. as you could see with, with what happened there. You know, here we have, you and I, over the years, have had many personal fallings out and professional fallings out, yes. but here we are, we talk together. Again, this is the most important thing human beings need to remember. We are in relationship with one another. That's the most important thing. Even with people you don't agree with and you dislike, mm. you're still in relationship with them, and we're forgetting this. We're thinking, no, we'll just judge you and you're over. It's finished. We'll move you out of the way in search of some vile utopia where no one can make a single mistake. I think it's like, I don't want to live in that world. How's progressivism? going for you lot. We've got lots of questions coming in. Mark from Cambridge asks, are there any aspects of woke culture that you think are good and we should keep? Yes, 100%, because woke culture is essentially progressivism. So we no longer chemically castrate gay men, for example. That is thing. A, Lucky for me. That's a woke thing. It's a, it's, it's a turning around and going, this is a horrible blight on our society and we would like to stop that. We, we celebrate uh, same-sex relationships. These are progressive attitudes. What, what, we're, what we don't understand in culture nowadays is that we are woke. What we're not is religiously woke, mm. which is what has started well, happening you now. Explain what you mean by that. Well, you know... Um, Wokery has now become a religion. It, it, it has doctrines, it has rituals, it, it, it has everything. And, and that's a very dangerous combination, politics and religion. It's very, very fervent. It cancels, it, mm. it excommunicates, it's heretics. And, um, and it is very, very dangerous to combine those two. People need meaning in their lives. They thrive on meaning. It's the most important thing, isn't it, in most people's lives. So if you combine politics and religion, which is what wokery is, you create a very, very divided world. And, you know, I challenge anyone to turn around and say, we're living in a happier world than we were 10 years ago. What about people who say, though, Lawrence, actually, maybe you cause division sometimes? I mean, if we look at the issue of, of taking the knee, and, and I'm... I'm fundamentally opposed to the act of that because I think it's connected to the Black Lives Matter organisation which wants to defund the police and, and overthrow capitalism. Um, and I can't separate the two things. At the same time, I wouldn't boo the England players. I don't judge the people who do, but I personally wouldn't do it. You went one step further and you actually said that you want the England team to lose the Euros because they've taken the lead. It isn't something like that causing division, the sort of division that you rail against? Well, I don't think it's... I think what I do is I provoke conversation. Mm. That's what I want to do, because I'm interested in the broadest possible debate. I think it's very, very difficult to support a football team that is, especially a bunch of millionaire children, um, yeah. taking the knee to an organisation which seeks... You know, it's like, if you're, if you're really... They, they said after Millionaire while, woke babies protesting inequality on £200,000 a week. Your words, Lawrence, about the England... Yeah! Too. Do you know what I mean, though? <laughs> on one level. It's like, where does it... I, I used to sit on acting mm. sets. But how, with, how does it hurt you, though, what they're doing? How does it hurt me? Mm. Because I don't want politics in football. Okay. I sat in a... Uh, traffic jam in 1996 listening to England beat Holland 4-1 and people were getting out of their cars and they were of all colours, cultures, ages and mm. sizes and sexual orientations cheering. Mm. Do you see all of that going on at the moment? But no, it would be good for the psyche of the country though for England. What, to kneel to, to well a Marxist organisation? No, 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 to do well at the Euros. Would it? I, I'm, I'm, I, what, four teams have kneeled so far? 
I'm like, I'll pick a team that hasn't kneeled. And also, if, we, if, if it's about what you believe in, if these people are saying it's, it's borderless, you know, we're kneeling to, we're not kneeling to Black Lives Matter, aside from the fact that all you could do is stand up and link arms and go stand up to racism, which we all do. It's this idea that if you don't support these people, you're a racist. And that is the most divisive thing you can do to a culture. We all live in one country, and the best way we can live in this country is to go, it doesn't matter what skin colour we are, it doesn't matter what sexual orientation we are. We are one country. And that's what I think unites people. These people are dividing people, and they're woke babies. Uh, we've got a question here from Adam that we can take a look at. Hello. I am a great fan of your work and also a great fan of comedy. I am a man who loves to laugh. I am of the belief that either one can joke about everything or nothing at all, because somebody will always be offended by a joke. What are your thoughts on this? Thank you. And of course, Jennifer Saunders today has said that in this uh, woke comedy culture, she would not be able to make absolutely fabulous. So, so there is a real issue here, isn't there? What, what do you reckon? Well, the, the only Achilles heel of wokery is comedy. So you notice it vanished, didn't it? And we were left with Nish Kumar, which made me want to die a slow and painful death by myself. So comedy's coming back. You know, Jon Stewart did his riff on the, uh, on the Wuhan lab uh, on uh, Colbert the other night. Bill Maher's brilliant. Bill Maher's getting very good. I mean, they are late to the game, but it's good. I think comedy is, is, is Wokery's Achilles heel. So I agree. I think laughter... Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais is, is, is great. superb. Uh, fighting against this. He's a fantastic human. So, so do you do you think then, Lawrence, you might actually be starting to win the battle? I mean, would, would you say that maybe you have made a difference to this? The, 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 the battle's already won. You know, you, you're not... People bullying other people never win, do they? You know, it's not going to win. It's just how long it takes to beat them. And um, that's why they hate me so much, because I'm an ultimate traitor, because I'm a sort of lovey, showbizy type. Well, I was. And, um, you know, I'm just a traitor to them. But it's like, no, we stand up in, in, in their faces, offer them reason mm. and, and rational thought, and stop the enlightenment, which is what they're trying to do. Are there other actors, TV presenters, celebrities, sportsmen, who you know feel the same way as you, might speak to you privately about their feelings, but they're not prepared to speak publicly about them because they're scared of the reaction and scared of being cancelled. Yes, and I'm in, I'm in conversation with quite a few of them, quite um, prominent people who are fed up now. So I think you're going to find that there's going to be more and more that come out against it. You know, we, we, we don't want to live in this world like this. We don't, we want to live in a world where there's a group of individuals, not a collection of individuals. It's, you know, it's just us together as, as individual people talking to individuals and, and sharing our stories, not, not being lumped into groups of oppressor and oppressed. It's, it's just terrible. Uh, Angus has emailed into GB Views uh, to ask why is everyone supportive of the government taking away our freedom. Of course, you have been a major anti-lockdown advocate. Well, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm an anti-lockdown advocate. I'd say I'm a save our rights advocate, mm -hmm. which is the most important what, thing. What do you mean by that? Well, anti-lockdown is like, you can be anti-lockdown, pro-lockdown, whatever it is. But we're, what we're talking about is a removal of our fundamental human rights by this government, to the point where they're talking about saying, well, if you want to work in a care home or a hospital, you have to be vaccinated. That's taking control of your bodily autonomy. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, what, sorry, I've, lo I've lost my thread on what you were saying in terms of... So why, why, I guess the question he's asking is why everyone supports the government and well, because by the government, the government are, there, is a well, there is a majority support for these measures. Well, they're bribing everyone to stay at home with free money from some incredible magic money tree, aren't they? They're bribing everyone to Do you stay. think the furlough scheme is the reason why people support lockdown? No, I think lockdown... Who wants to get on a crowded, horrible, stinky tube and go to work? I think it's a po popular policy. I get it, but human beings are social animals, mm. right? So we need to bump into each other. We need to go to the pub, we need to go to the theatre, we need to go to the cinema. It's important that we do this. If you remove that, as the government have done, we start having online relationships and they're very torturous and painful. Mm. So I think for the betterment of mankind, for the betterment of my, my children, 
you see that I've seen the anxiety in my own kids, one of whom has been, um, you know, sent home again for 10 days. And it's oh. just like, this is, you know, and he's, a, I'm sat in front of a computer with him in floods of tears. And he's going, I thought this was finished. You said this was finished, Dad. And I'm like, you, this really is child hard. abuse, guys. Is that, that's how you it's feel? It's 100% what's being done by the government is child abuse. And it's certainly by Matt Hancock. Who's really got a? He's but got but a, he's but but Matt Hancock isn't responsible for the education brief though. No, but Matt Hancock is responsible for the health brief, and the health brief is there for feeds down into the education brief, doesn't it? The kids aren't being sent home because of education policy; they're being sent home because of health policy. So either your vaccine works. Because the next big battleground, let's be honest, the the next big battleground is about vaccinating our kids, and 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 we've seen it happen in America. Megyn Kelly was on earlier this week saying that in some US states, in, including New York, where her, where her kids go to school, if you are an unvaccinated child at school, you have to keep your mask on and you won't be able to take part in certain extracurricular activities. So are you worried about that coming here? Well, if that comes here, I'll take my children out of school. They won't be going to school. You know, and if we have to live in a two-tier society where I am the, on the wrong side of the apartheid, then so be it. It's an appalling thing to do to a population for a disease with this level of lethality once you have vaccinated the most vulnerable people. To continue this is just a crime. It's cruelty, actually, now. Now, anti-lockdown protests. I have mm. spoken out about the hypocrisy in the media o over these because, of course, you see uh, the BLM or the XR protests given wall-to-wall -wall coverage and anti-lockdown protests, which had tens, some people would even say hundreds of thousands of people marching through London, although those figures were never confirmed because the officials and the media organisations decided not to confirm them, got short shrift. However, Lawrence, that footage yesterday of Nick Watt, the Newsnight reporter, being hounded by anti-lockdown protesters to the point where he felt his safety was at risk, didn't do the cause any good, did it? Well, the first thing I would say about that was that's the hardcore element of within, mm. and you're right in the fact there are hundreds of thousands of people marching through London. And it is, as I've said before, it's what Glastonbury wishes it was, genuinely freedom-loving people marching peacefully and helping each other out to say, look, we need a return of our rights. And I would say to you, Dan, why don't GB News come, because I mm. organise these things with these people, mm. I'm really close um, contact with people, why don't GB News say we will come and we will cover the next protest and the next march and, and, we'll, and we will report this fully so that people can see what the level of support mm. is because there's going to be more than a million people on the streets that day on the 20th. Yeah, and we did have a journalist there at the uh, Down Street did. protest this week. I covered it on my show, but it, all I'm but it saying is disgusting. it was disappointing it, 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 yeah, to no, see actually, that hardcore fringe. I, I think bullying of any kind in that way is utterly despicable. If you've got a problem with the BBC, stop paying your licence fee. Don't go after a, an individual journalist. No human being in a civilised democracy, actually in anywhere in the world, should f be frightened by a bunch of, let's be honest, not sober people who were, who were sh screaming obscenities in their face. That's not how you create change. But there will come a point, and the government are going to realise this, there will come a point where people stop marching and the disobedience starts to occur. And that is, unfortunately, is one of the little outliers of what's going to come their way unless they fully, finally and permanently return our liberties come their new Freedom Day. Lawrence Fox, thank you so much for being here tonight for Thanks the big question. Me. We will speak soon.